What is up, everybody? Hopefully all of you are having a fantastic day or night wherever you live, because today we're here to talk about the upcoming anime season, Summer of Anime 2022. And let's be honest, many of us have been actively looking forward to this upcoming anime season, I know I have, and also many of us are actively looking forward to the fall of anime 2022. I mean, as every day passes and every week passes, etc., we're getting closer and closer to a golden era of anime for fall. So I'm excited. Honestly, just being able to make this video lets me know that we're so close to being able to have, let's say, Chainsaw Man's anime, to have Bleach back, etc. It's honestly just straight up exciting. So anyways, let's get started. Let's talk about this season of anime, and there's quite a few things I am definitely looking forward to, like as you can see right here at the start, Ruby, I'm super excited for it. I cannot wait. So let, let's just, let's go through this list and let's see what I want to watch, what you guys might want to watch, what you might think is going to be a dark horse of a series, what I think is going to be a dark horse of a series, what I might be on the fence on, and maybe you guys might recommend me and steer me the other way to watch it or review it. We'll see where it goes. So let's just, let's dive headfirst into it. If you want this site as well, I'll have it linked in the description down below. So let's begin. So we start off with uh, Chimo, which is the art style, I'm going to be honest with you, it's not for me. I know for a fact that uh, many will probably be like, you shouldn't judge, you know, a series by its art style, but sometimes I do, and I'm just, it's not for me. I, it might be good, but that one's not for me. Now, Ruby, this is the one I'm excited about to talk about, because I made a video about a week and a half, two weeks ago, talking about, you know, the upcoming Ruby anime, and as you know, Ruby is going to be made by Studio Shaft. The same studio that has brought us March Comes In Like a Lion, and also the same studio that brought us the Monogatari series. So, it's incredibly exciting to see such a great team and a great studio working on a Ruby anime. And FYI, Ruby is incredibly popular in Japan. Very, very popular. So, to be able to have a retelling of Ruby in a 2D format that isn't CGI is just incredibly exciting. And I just, I cannot wait to see it and that shaft, you know, direction with it because of how how colorful Ruby is in the first place. So yes, obviously I'm going to be doing reviews and talking about Ruby when it is set to air. Now, Kanojo, Okuri, Shimasu, second season, haven't seen the first season, so going to skip. Uh, Kamikuzu Idol, I heard about this one. This is an idol series, basically. It's like a startup idol show. I'm not really one for idols. Now, I know there can be good ones, like Oshinoko that, you know, is getting an anime, etc. I know there can be good idol manga, good idol light novels, and anime. I know for a fact there is. It's just, I usually not one that actively searches and seeks those stuff out, but there is usually really good, and this is probably going to be another good one, but I'm probably going to just sit this on the fence for now. Um, Ice Cream 2, this is a short form, just skip, not even gonna waste my time. Um, we have Teppin right here, Comedy School Slice Life by Studio Drive. Uh, I believe Drive was announced to be working on something recently, I forget, I made a video on it, oh well. Um, Yaoi Sakamoto, a diehard fan of comedians and comedy acts, and roles in the private Kazuki High School in Namba. Osaka's entertainment district famous as the starting point for many comedians. She reunites with Yomogi, a childhood friend who once formed the comed uh, comedy duo Kona Manzu with her when they were little. Before long, they find themselves putting together a routine at a park like they did before in order to enter a local shopping area's contest. At that moment, a mysterious girl calls out to them. So this is like a stand-up comedy anime. That's what I'm getting from this. This seems like this could be a very fluffy and fun show, like people are going to be talking about and making clips on, etc. But overall, I don't know how like in-depth I can get and potentially make videos on Teppin. I, I might do a first impressions, no promises there, but this definitely seems like one of those shows that could be very, very fun to just sit down and just relax to. So I'll definitely check it out, but no promises on reviewing episode by episode. Now we have Lycoris Recall, 81 Pictures, okay, anime original. I recognize this name. It's anime original, so it's not based on, uh, an, like, you know, a manga or a light novel, so... I'm going to assume the rec uh, recommendations I've received for this, like to watch this when it comes out, is probably from trailers. Maybe people have watched the trailers of this and said it looks really good. 
uh, I probably will check this one out just because of that, but let's see what this is. So Laiko Reko is a cafe with traditional Japanese twists located in downtown Tokyo, but the delicious coffee and sugary sweets are not the only orders uh, this cafe takes. From delivering packages in short distances to pickups and drop-offs on the lonely streets at night to zombies and giant monsters extermination, whatever your problem, we're here to help. We will solve any kind of trouble you may have. Ooh, so this seems very fun. This seems like this could be a more on a darker side, judging by just the cover art as well. Yes, I will definitely do a first impressions on this. I'm actually excited to see this in 10 days from now. So, yeah, checking it out. Okay, so now we have Musashino. There is no synopsis, so let's... Oh, it's a short form. Okay, I'm going to skip regardless. But uh, no synopsis. I was going to search it up. Um, next we have... Uh, let's scroll down here. Shoot Gold to the Future. So, it looks like it's going to be a sports series. Usually, every anime season they need a sports anime and they need like a fantasy a sekai series it's just it's tradition at this point let's be honest so um shoot gold of the future uh atsu asushi a former captain at kikigawa high school and the world-renowned courageous captain for a famous italian soccer team and hideto a student at kakigawa high school who seems uninterested in now weakened soccer team their meeting is the start of a new legend okay so a traditional summary synopsis for a sports series however one of the big things about sports series and why people love sports anime and manga, etc., is because one of the big things about it, one of the only things that writers can really do with these type of stories is character development and characterization, because it's all about the characters, it's about the team and how they grow as people throughout the storyline, so because of that, you know, if you're someone that's really into, like, a, a realistic growth of a character and, you know, just development, you know, sports series are always what you go to, and so this is probably going to be good, it's by EMT Square, don't know much about that studio, but it's anime original, so it's not based on a manga, it's not based on a light novel, so this could potentially be be good i'm actually i might check this one out no promises but i'll probably check it out uh engaged kiss no synopsis a1 pictures and it is original comedy romance supernatural okay so let's uh let's check this out let's see what this is Okay, so we have this. Okay, so it's summer 2022, July 3rd, A1 Pictures. Okay, Veyron City, a mega floating metropolis created from the discovery of new energy sources. Shu, a young man who owns and operates a small business in the area, leads a meager life due to his reckless spending. Hisara, a girl who visits Shu's office and home because she's constantly concerned about him. She works while attending high school in Veyron City, doing everything from clerical work to housework. Ayano, Shu's ex-girlfriend in a senior colleague at the corporation he had previously worked for is also worried about him. Thus begins the slapstick romantic comedy of three people in a slightly unusual relationship that takes place on an artificial island in the Pacific Ocean. Okay, so it's a romantic comedy, slapstick, etc. So if you're someone that's wanting like a rom-com, etc., this is probably going to be your series. There might be more to it than that. Looking at this PV2, like just to look at the image alone, it looks really nice in terms of art style. It probably will be enjoyable. I I'll probably check this one out. Uh, it definitely seems like something I'll enjoy. Okay, so next up we have uh, Utawari Aru Mono. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait. Isn't this based on the game? Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Is, is this the game? It is. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Wait, is this getting an anime by White Fox? So this is getting... An anime from White Fox. Okay, begins the first two episodes back to back, so an hour long special, basically. Okay, is this um, is this the beginning of the story, or is this like a season two or something? If anyone can confirm for me, please do. Now, to clarify a few things. I have not played these games. Okay, I, I haven't. But the reason I know about it is because I been recommending them for years now people have told me about these stories they're like you know that this is really good you should you know get into it the visual novels or whatever and it, can i start here does anyone know is this like the first one or is this going to skip content you know please let me know in the comments well i am actually very curious about that uh next up we have luminous witches by studio shaft another shaft sto uh show so we have ruby and that well, I know Ruby's going to definitely get a lot of attention, so this is probably going to be thrown to the wolves, this Shaft's uh, show. So, Luminous Witches, the story centers around a unique squadron of witches who don't fight. Instead, the squadron sings and performs music to protect the smiles of those who have been driven out of their hometowns by the Nuroi. Anime Original. 
Could be good, could be not. It's probably going to be a throwaway show, though, because of the fact that there's another Shaft series that same season, so... We'll see where that one goes. I'll keep that one on the fence. So now we have Yurei Deco from Science Saru. Uh, just looking at the art style, I'm gonna skip. Another anime original, though. Holy crap, there's a lot of originals. Uh, Prima Doll, Sci-Fi Slice of Life, uh, uh Bibori Animation Studio. Uh, Cafe, Corone, Cote, bo uh, boast an unusual roster of employees, a group of automata or anonymous mechanical dolls, served their patrons with a smile, but they weren't always so suited to domestic life. Just a few years prior, uh, automata served as weapons in the Great War, fulfilling the uh, bloody purpose for which they were created. Now that the war has ended, these machines with human hearts search for their place in an unfamiliar, peaceful world, and their search begins at the Corone Cote Cafe. So this is Violet Evergarden. Okay, that, 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 that's literally what this is. It's Violet Evergarden, but with some differences. A little bit of differences. That probably could be really good. The only thing is, it's, it looks Moe Blob, so I wonder what they're trying to do there. Maybe they want to contrast the dark theme with the cuteness. We'll see. But uh, this feels like a sci-fi-ish, like, uh, Violet Evergarden. That's exactly what this looks like, so I'll probably check that out. Uh, what we have here is Tensei Kinja no Asekai Life. Die 2, I'm, I'm not reading all that. Action, fantasy, adventure, Revo Root premieres the first two episodes back to back. Getting a Sekai to a magical world and developing incredible powers is every otaku's wildest dreams. But for Salaryman Yuji, it's the stuff of absolute nightmare. He's in the middle of a mountain of work, and when he gets unwillingly pulled into a fantasy realm, where he accomplishes the inevitable feat of developing a second character class by making the most of his monster tamer abilities, now he's traded the office for venturing to make a living. But he keeps getting roped into major events because his powers are unmatched, second to none, and he doesn't even realize it yet. Okay, so, okay, so if I can understand this, this is once again run of the mill, you know, you're, you know, you're reincarnated in the world, transported to another world type story. If I'm understanding this right, it, it, it's obviously going to be a power fantasy. I mean, clearly he's very strong and even says it in the description, but it seems like he doesn't want to be in the world and he just wants to relax, but he keeps being forced to actually doing things. That sounds fascinating, depending on how far the concept wants to take it. I'm going to check it out, obviously, because I do like my Asekai trash. I, I really do. Don't don't hate on me. I, I just love it. So I'm definitely going to check it out just for that reason alone. I don't know if it's going to be good, but we'll see. Definitely going to check it out. Definitely do, you know, a first impressions on it. Uh, next, we have Classroom of the Elite Season 2. Now, I am super curious about this one because I'm in reading the light novel. I'm on Volume 4, for clarification, Volume 4 of the light novel, A Classroom of the Elite. And Season 1 was not good, just going to say. I, I already knew it before I read the light novel, but after reading it, after I talked about the announcement of Season 2, it's very clear how bad Season 1 was. So I am genuinely interested on how the second season of Classroom of the Elite is going to be. I'm not going to promise videos on it, but I'm probably going to watch it just out of sheer curiosity. I am very curious to see how Classroom of the Elite Season 2 handles some of the content that was cut or rushed in the first season. So we'll see where that one goes. I have that one on the side for now. Uh, next up, we have a card fight Vanguard. There's always a card fight series, man. I'm going to skip it because I'm not interested, but man, there's always a card fight series. Uh, next, we have Kinso no Vermil, uh, Staple Entertainment, Echi Fantasy School Shonen. It's been a while since I've seen that combination. Uh, meet Alto, a hapless student, a royal Ortiga Gia. I probably just butchered that. Magic Academy, whose academic performance leaves much to be desired. Rather than take a sensible approach to salvaging his grades in time for graduation, uh, Alto decides to summon a bit of other otherworldly assistance. Only after does he learn he's bound the legendary she-devil Vermeli into service as his familiar. But while Vermeli is a powerful ally sure to turn his grades around, her magic can only be replenished with a kiss, and that makes everything go to hell with Alto's jealous childhood friend Lilia. Ooh, okay, so... Obviously, this is probably going to be a trash series. I'm, I'm just going to keep it real. Even if it's fun and entertaining, it's going to be trash. And the reason why I say that is because it's going to be very fan service heavy. It's going to be one of those series that, you know, is just is going to be eye candy for a lot of people. Now, I could be wrong. 
I legitimately could be wrong, because Rosario Vampire was eye candy, but a very good story. If you've ever actually read that manga, don't watch the anime, just read the manga. So this could be good. This legitimately could be a good show. But looking at the way it is, it's probably just going to be funny. It's going to have some fan service in it and a little bit like that. I... I'm probably going to watch it just out of curiosity, because it's been a while since I've actually seen an anime with this concept. It's It's been a bit, honestly, so I'll probably just check it out for that sheer fact alone. Um, next, we have Overlord Season 4, which I have talked about, and I am so pumped. I'm so freaking pumped for Overlord Season 4. Like, seriously, I cannot wait for it to air, because... I'm going to get some of my favorite content finally adapted, and I really hope that Madhouse brings their A-game. I mean, looking at the trailer that released, it does look like that, but anything can happen, but I really am excited for Overlord Season 4. Please let it be good. I am so excited. Next, we have Tokyo Mew Mew Mew. Wait, wait, what? Tokyo Mew Mew? I've never seen the original, but there's another one? What? Uh, is this like a remake? I, I don't know if this is a remake or not. If anyone could cl uh, clarify, is this a remake or is this like a continuation? Please do, but I never watched the original. Um, Next we have Joshinchan Dropkick X. Okay, so season three of Dropkick on my devil. So I haven't seen the other season, so I'm going to have to skip. Uh, Mama Haha no Surego. Um, let's see. Comedy Romance Project number nine. Based on a light novel, uh, high school. Is there any better place to start fresh after a horrible middle school relationship? Nope. Not unless your ex ends up at the same school as you and is now your step sibling. Oh my goodness, we have some domestic girlfriend going on. What was that supposed to be? A sanctuary of peace where I would avoid ever seeing her again? Has it become a living nightmare? Everywhere I look, I see her. In my house, in my school, in my class, there is no escape. She even claims that she's the older sibling. Like hell she is. But I won't lose to her after all I'm the older brother in this new family situation. Now, that's right, we're family now. No matter how much we may have fought we loved each other before, we saw one another's true colors and realized we weren't meant for each other. That's why even though we may keep up a buddy-buddy sibling act for the sake of our parents, things will never go back to the way it used to be. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Asekai Oji. So, I heard about this. So, apparently, like, an uncle or an old man got asekai into another world. So I I heard about people uh, about this series. People were recommending it to me. Autumn 2017, hit by a truck. Ah yes, truck gun. Well, uh, when he was 17 years old, Takafumi's uncle suddenly awakens from a coma that lasted 17 years. When Takafumi visits him in the hospital, he sees his uncle muttering nonsense, declaring that he has returned from another world named Grand Bahamal. Wait, whoa, whoa, what? Wait. So it's literally after the Asekai comes to him, when the story ends, and the person goes back to his original... What? That sounds cool. That legitimately... Okay, this might be the dark horse of the season. Legitimately, I think this is the dark horse. This sounds really freaking cool. Next, we have Made in Abyss Season 2, and... Gonna tell ya, I'm also excited for this. Like, if there's, like, three series that I am truly looking forward to, it's Overlord... Main and Abyss, and The Ruby Show, and Devil is a part-timer, but the other three are the real ones I'm really looking forward to. Main and Abyss, Season 2, oh my goodness. I'm going to tell you right now, as someone that, uh, you know, has read the manga, I am up to date with the manga, okay? That's clarification. If you thought Season 1 was dark, or the movie that you have to watch, by the way, if you have not seen the movie that came out... You have to watch it before you see Season 2, because it literally is a gap in between Season 1 and Season 2. But um, all I'm going to say is if you love Lovecraft, like Lovecraftian horror, cosmic horrors, etc., you are going to fall in love with Season 2 of Maiden Abyss. I'm not going to go much further than that, and I know it seems very generic for me to just say the series is dark, but I don't want to spoil, because it really is a dark dark story, and I will say that, like, if you know anything about Lovecraft, Lovecraftian, etc., you will know how dark those stories are. So, if you like that stuff, Main of Abyss 2 is right up your alley. It is Lovecraft to the max. Get ready for that. Uh, next up, we have Waru, uh, I, I, I can't pronounce that. Uh, no synopsis, Linden Films, let's, uh, let's see what this is. What is this? Okay... 
Ah, no synopsis. Wonderful. Uh, Pony Cannon. Okay, so just... Okay, I'm just gonna... I'll shelf that for now. Uh, next up we have a set... Oh my... It's this series. <laughs> okay, so this one right here... <laughs> How can I say? Um, if you remember Worlds in Harem, okay? How that kind of is, or, you know, just those type of shows, like, it's just so shameless and just trash in terms of just so much fan service, etc. This is that series. The, 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 this is going, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you, man, that's, this is gonna be like the world, a world in harem, a redo of Healer, etc. of the anime season. That's all I'm gonna say, and yes, I'm up to date with the manga. That's all I'm gonna say too. But uh, this is this is this season's worlds in here. Um, Shin Tensei no Oji, uh, no synopsis. Gonna skip. Uh, Kimicho Muzume no Sawa Garukari from Studio Phil. Um, who's your nanny? Uh, Kurishima Toru is the right-hand man of the Sakuragi crime family. For him, the job is a perfect excuse to let his violent instincts run wild, earning him the nickname the Demon of Sakuragi. It seems like nothing will stand the way of his vicious nature. But then one day he receives an assignment like never before from the boss, babysitting his daughter. Oh, okay. So this is going to be a very cutesy show. I'm actually excited. I I I'll watch this. This seems like a very fun cutesy show. Oh, it's, oh yeah, this is coming out this season. Okay, so Call of the Night. Okay, let's talk about this one. So, this is probably going to be another dark horse of this anime season. Now, let me, let me clarify. I have read the manga of Call of the Night. I talked about this series, like, last year, actually. I, I, I literally talked about this on social media last year. And the reason why I even started it, I want to be just frank with you is because of this tag right here vampire okay i just want to make sure i'm transparent i started this series of read the monk as vampire because i'm i'm a fan of vampires i like vampires i like fantasy stories around vampires it's really cool i'm a sucker for those type of stories i am especially vampire romance stories and this had both of those things so i was like i was curious i was really curious to see if this would be good or not i read the manga Manga is great. I wouldn't think it's the best thing I've ever seen or read, but it's a good manga. Very, very solid manga. And I'm up to date. And I've seen the trailers for this, and the trailers look really good, very colorful, and I think it matches the tone perfectly, at least from what I've seen from the trailers, of Call of the Night. And so, if you're looking for a vampire romance that's kind of a little bit different... I recommend this. It's going to probably be good. So just give it a shot. Check it out. Because I think it will be a dark horse of this anime season. Definitely going to review that show. Um, Sorty de uh, Demo Ayumi. Uh, I've seen this these characters before. Anyways, comedy, romance, school, shown in slice of life. When Ayumu uh, Tanaka falls in love with the only other members of the school, Shogi Chess Club, Urushi Yao, uh, Yao Tomi, he vows to confess his love for her as soon as he can beat her in the match. But this proves difficult. Urushi is nevertheless thrown off by Ayumu's aggressive styles. The two begin a cat and mouse game of both Shogi and life in this heart-tickling romantic comedy. Okay, so it's a rom-com, and it's a little bit Kaguya-inspired. Uh, this will probably be a good show. I'll probably watch that on my own time. Uh, next we have Buchi Giri, um, historical samurai, this looks fun, um, anime or original, okay, Geno Studio, an era where samurai control Japan, the mass demons annihilated all but one member of the Shinsengumi who have worked to maintain the peace and public order in Kyoto. Seven criminals are chosen as substitutes for the deceased Shinsengumi members and they are led by Ichiban Boshi, whose parents who were also killed by the mass demons. Yeah, this seems fun, this seems fun, I'll, I'll fence it. I might check it out. Uh, Shadows House Season 2. Ah, uh, yes. What a... Out of all the things that came out from, like, Studio Cloverworks last year, Shadow House was definitely a really solid series. I really liked Shadow House. Very unique. Very, very unique show. Reminded me a lot of Rose and Maiden. Like, if you ever have watched Rose and Maiden or read the manga of Rose and Maiden, just the very tone and vibe of Shadow House gave me that feeling. I really am looking forward to season 2. I cannot wait to watch this. I'll probably watch it in my own time, but I am excited about Shadow House. 
Uh, next up we have, let's see here, Hoshi no Samadari by Studio Naz, action fantasy sci-fi seinen supernatural. I like the cover so far. Um, everything about college student Ama Mia uh, is average. Grades, looks, and his uh, outlook on life. So what happens when he awakens one day to a talking lizard who informs him that there is a gigantic hammer in outer space? poised to split the earth into pieces and request his allegiance in the fight against the forces of evil. Pretend it, uh, pretend it never happened, unfortunately for Yuhi, a little bit of uh, uh, cor uh, caution in the form of superpower princess pre uh, prevent uh, prevents him from returning to his mediocre life as usual. In the adventures of his lifetime, Yuhi, uh, Yuhi will join forces with the unpredictable princess and seek out a motley crew of companions to fight back against the evil mage and his horrifyingly powerful human before the biscuit hammer destroys the planet. It sounds so ridiculous that I want to watch this. I'm, I want to watch that. Uh, Kuru no Shokanshi uh, Satellite Action Fantasy. So this looks like our general fantasy series based on a light novel. Waking up in a strange place with no memory of his past life, Kelvin learns that he's uh, uh, bartered away those very memories in exchange for powerful new abilities. During his recent transmigration, heading out into a whole new world as a summoner with his list, uh, with his first follower being the very goddess who brought him over, Kelvin begins his new life as an adventurer, and it isn't long before he discovers his hidden disposition as a battle junkie. From the Black Knight of the Ancient Castle, the evil spirits, to the demon within the hidden cave of the sage, he revels in the fight against one formidable foe after another. Join this OP adventure in exhilarating an epic saga as he and his allies carved the way into the uh, records of history. So, another power fantasy. Might be fun. Gonna check it out, because I'm a sucker for fantasy stories. So, yes. Um, Extreme Hearts by... It's a music sports by Studio... Or Seven Arcs. Anime original. Okay. The story set in the future. Hyper Sports. Uh, I gotta skip. Uh, Dr. Stone. Ah, yes, the original episode coming out. I'm, I'm excited for this. I'm excited to watch this. Uh, I might talk about it, we'll see, but I'm excited for that. Esekai Yakyoku. Based on a light novel, a young pharmaceuticalist and researcher in Japan died from over... Ooh, that hits close. And was reincarnated in a medieval parallel U uh, Europe. He was reincarnated as a 10-year-old apprentice to a famous royal court pharmacist, had attained the inhuman skills of abilities to see through diseases, material creation, and material destruction, and a society in which dubious medical practices are rampant, price gouging through the monopoly of the pharma pharmacist guild, and good medicine aren't available to the commoners. He was recognized by the uh, emperor at the time and opened a pharmacy at the uh, corner of the town. Ooh, okay, checking this one out. This one seems really good. I really like that. It. it seems very different. I'm gonna check it out. Uh, Hanabi Chan, short form skip. Um, Orient Second Court. Oh, oh yeah, I made a video on Orient Season 1 a while back. And I talked about just how there was such a lack of movement and animation and some laziness from Season 2 of Orient. And it's sad because the writer of Orient is the same writer as, you know, Moggy. You know, that famous series. And it's so sad what I saw from Orient Season 1. I dropped the show. I'm going to be legitimate. I dropped the Orient anime because of how bad it was. Because the manga is good. And... I really doubt season two is going to be any better. I'm going to be honest with you. So I'm not going to probably watch it. If it is better, that's good. But I don't think it will be because season one was just, oh goodness. It was, I made a video on it. You can go and see it if you're interested. Um, Shine Post. Okay, this looks like an idol series. Just looking at it. Yeah, music, Studio Kai, idol. Uh, I'm going to skip. Not, I'm not really in the mood for an idol series right now. Um, Devil's a part-timer season two. Obviously, going to talk about, going to do videos on it. We've been waiting like seven plus years or whatever. So, obviously, I'm going to talk about Devil as a part-timer season two. Uh, Fai Okunin Button. Uh, other, okay. Okay, uh, I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Uh, the story centers on a button that grants a million yen to whoever pushes it with the condition that they must spend 500 million years alone in an empty space. However, at the end of the 500, uh, 500 million years, the person loses, uh, loses that memory, returns to the point in time when they push the button. The person with this button appears in front of a 5-year-old Tonio, 14-year-old Jabai, and 17-year-old Suneko, three siblings who need money to pay for their father's hospital treatment. That seems like an interesting series. I might check that out. Uh, Loveless Superstar. Uh, Superstar. I haven't seen the first season, so skip. 
Uh, oh, yes, Dungeon Girl. Man, dude, I, it's so crazy that Dungeon Girl is still ongoing. We're on a fourth season. Goodness. Like, we've had spinoffs. Now we're on a fourth season. It is wild, honestly. It's absolutely wild how long this series has been ongoing. I'm, all, I'm still in season three, by the way. Just to clarify, I need, I need to catch up to this because this is still ongoing. Holy crap. Uh, now we have Saiken Yato, uh, Yatota. I actually follow this offer on social media. I have seen their works here and there, and I am actually curious to watch this. I'm not going to read the, uh, the synopsis. I know it's like a maid series or whatever, but I'm not going to read this for the sheer fact is I've seen enough art from this offer. And that's, you know, kind of published the volume covers, etc. That I really am interested in the show. So I'm definitely going to watch the show. I don't want to read too deep into actually what it's about. Because I want to be surprised when I actually, you know, I watch it. Uh, Bang Dream. Uh, no synopsis. Music. Okay. Just going to shelf that. Uta no Prince. New one hour special. I haven't seen the original, so skip. Uh, Futo Ta uh, Tante. Studio Kai. Action drama mystery, police scene, and supernatural. But bizarre instance occur, frequently on the far side, a mysterious beauty appears. Uh, oh, a new battle for Common Rider. Oh, okay, so it's Common Rider series. Haven't seen the original, so I'm gonna skip. Uh, short form, skip. Uh, don't know what that is, so skip. Another TV special, I haven't seen the other stuff, so skip. KG File, this looks interesting by the cover, but don't know what it is, so just shelf it. Over the Rainbow, TV Special, skip, TV Special, skip. Okay, so that is this anime season. There is quite a bit that's coming out. Obviously, there isn't a lot here as maybe fall season, but I think anyone that calls this anime season dry clearly doesn't know how bad anime seasons can be. This is a really good season. Like, I mean, once again, we have Ruby. We have, you know, this chill series top in. We have this series right here. Recall, that's probably going to be good. Engage Kiss might be very fun. We have this for the visual novel fans. You know, we have like this for the Asekai fans. Classroom of the Elite that even if it's a dumpster fire could be enjoyable. Overlord Season 4. This is like your typical etchy series, but it's probably going to be fun. I mean, we have stuff like Tokyo Mew Mew, Made in Abyss. This is Sekai. oji Sun seems really unique. This is literally Domestic Girlfriend, the remake pretty much. I mean, this one's going to be World's in Harem. I mean, th there's a lot here. Call of the Night. Uh, anyone that calls this season dry doesn't know a dry season. Th this is a really good anime season. I'm actually excited. This is going to be fun. So I'm going to leave it at that. What are you guys going to be watching? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching as well. Please leave me a like. It does help me out a lot. It helps with the videos being noticed, etc. So please leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it or you've watched to this point. Thank you so much. But with that, guys, be safe, stay healthy. She be out.